Hello everyone. So today we're going to talk a little bit about some basic collisions and physics in Unity. And specifically we're going to talk about a built-in component called a rigid body component that allows us to impose some predetermined physics on game objects in our scene. So I've already created a script here that I want to preview real quick. This script is pretty simple. Right now it's only, it's getting both the vertical and the horizontal axis, but it's only doing something with the vertical axis. So if the vertical axis is greater than zero, so by default if I'm pressing W or up, then my object will translate 0 0.05 units upward. If I'm pressing S or down, then I will translate 0 0.05 units downward. So right now, if I play my game and my editor for some reason down here is not updated, it's being really weird, so ignore that. If I play, press W, it goes up, I press S, it goes down. Everything's working as it should. So let's take a look at something really quick. We know now that game objects are nothing more than a com combination of components. So this sphere has a mesh filter and a mesh renderer, which allows it to take up space and display itself on the screen. And then it has this thing called the sphere collider. What's interesting about this component is it sounds like it means that our sphere should collide with stuff, right? Collider should recognize when it's hitting something. But if I select my plane, my plane also has a collider. You would think, okay, that means that my plane can also collide with things. But if I play my game and I move my sphere down, I can move my sphere through the plane. There doesn't seem to actually be any collision happening here. In fact, there is collision, but the collision is not telling the sphere to stop. It's just Unity keeping track of the fact that the sphere and the um, cube are touching. The sphere and the plane, rather, are touching. They don't actually collide with one another. So what we have to do is add a new component or write some custom code, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to worry about resting, writing custom collider code next time. For today, we're going to use a built-in component called a rigid body. And what a rigid body does is it gives physical um, properties to our sphere. So my sphere now has a mass, see that mass of one. And it also, I'm gonna uncheck this for now, use gravity, we're gonna get to use gravity in a second. And it also has what's called discrete collision detection. See this right here. So discrete collision detection means that um, Unity is checking for collisions at given intervals. So if this cube moves from one position to another, uh, Unity will check in certain places to see if it's collided with something, but it's not constantly checking for collisions. If I switch to, co to continuous, then Unity would constantly check uh, if we were colliding with something. The problem is, is that continuous takes a lot more memory. We do not want to use continuous unless it's a really, really specific collision that is very, very tough to check. We always want to leave this as discrete. So now if I play my game, and I try to drop the sphere, I'm holding S, and the sphere will not go through my plane. It keeps looking like it's going to go through, or trying to go through, but not actually able to do so. Notice that a rigid body only needs to be applied to one of the objects. The plane is not a rigid body, but the plane has a collider. So when our sphere, which is a rigid body, tries to get through the plane, the rigid body says, nope, this is, this is a collider, this physically exists, I cannot pass through it. So the rigid body only needs to be on one of the two objects that's colliding for it to understand that it cannot pass through the object. So let's take a look at a couple of other useful things. This video should be pretty quick. Uh, our rigid body example is going to be relatively small, and then you guys are going to have a lab to do in class. Um, but if we look at our rigid body, there's an option here that says to use gravity. So using gravity, if I check that, pretty straightforward, my sphere will fall. So now if I press W to try to raise it up, it looks like it's struggling against gravity. It's trying to fly, but it can't. And that's because I'm moving it up a little bit, but gravity's dragging it back down. 
So that's the um, issue that we're having. Well, not the issue, but that's what's causing our sphere to act all funky when I try to make it go up. Use gravity is just a little checkbox that automatically applies a downward force to our sphere. Okay. So the second part of this video has to do with how to get the rigid body component from our script and how to add a velocity to it. So let's take a look at our script right now. Right now we can translate up and down and translate literally means move to a new position. So when I'm pressing up it moves my sphere 0.05 units upward. I'm going to add a component here that is a private rigid body. I'm going to call it RB. Now what we're going to do, kind of like in the last scripting video where we talked about how to get an object, in this video we're going to learn how to get a component. So in our start method, we need to initialize the rigid body. Right now RB doesn't point to anything, so we can't use it. But if I say RB equals get component, and this is a really weird method. For some of us, th this syntax will look familiar. For most of you guys, you probably have never seen this before. So in C Sharp or in Java, there are certain times where we're going to use less than greater than symbols, in addition to the parentheses at the end of our method. What this less than greater than symbol is doing is it's asking what type of component do I want. And in this case, I want a rigid body. So notice that the type of my variable and the type inside the uh, less than greater than symbols, they match. What Unity does, this is a special type of method that uses something called generics. Generics means that we can specify different types and cause the method to behave differently. What's happening in this line of code, remember that this script is attached to my sphere. So when I say get component of type rigid body, the script looks at itself, it looks at the sphere, and it says, okay, do I have a rigid body? Yes. Yes, I do. Here's my rigid body component. And it assigns that rigid body component to my RB variable. So now I can modify and access the rigid body properties by using my RB variable. So think of RB as being this. It's the physical properties of my sphere. So the one specifically that I want to talk about is velocity. I'm going to use velocity to move my sphere. Now velocity is different than translation. Watch what I mean. So I am going to create a vector 3. Um, actually, no, I'm just going to use, I'm going to use the built-in vector because um, that's faster. So uh, I am going to call my RB component, and I want to get the velocity, which is a property of the RB component. By default, when we start, um, because there's gravity, the velocity of my rigid body will only be downward. That's the only velocity that I'll have. All the other velocities, my forward, backwards, left, and right, those will all be zero. So I want to set my rigid body velocity to something new. I am going to set it to, and we're actually, I think, going to take, no, we'll leave gravity on for this. Um, I'm going to set my rigid velocity to, first I need to check my horizontal axis. If horizontal is greater than zero, I want to move right. But instead of translating, I'm going to set my velocity equal to vector 3 dot right. So this vector is the same as creating a new vector 3 that is 0, 0, 1. And I'm going to multiply this by 0 0.05. F. Okay, so now it's going to move 0 0.05 units to the right. Uh, otherwise, if horizontal is less than zero, I'm going to move the other way. So same thing, I'm going to take RB velocity, but instead of doing right, I'm going to go left. 
And last but not least, this is really, really important. Last but not least, I am going to set the velocity equal to um, zero. Actually, I want to do this a little bit differently. Well, we'll leave it as is. We won't worry about it for now. We may have to turn gravity off just so I don't mess up the gravity with my velocity thing here, but we'll see if it comes through in the demonstration. I'm going to hit play. All right, and we'll see that the ball is going to fall very slowly. This is because every frame I'm setting the velocity to zero, so gravity is not able to fully take over here. But now that it's on the ground, we can demonstrate what we want to demonstrate. So I am going to press D to move it to the right. And it's moving very very slowly Step a little bit. let's not multiply by 0.5 and let's go again all right so once this guy touches the ground what i hope to show <gasps> is that um velocity is going to behave a little bit differently than translate and the difference is this. When we translate something, it is moving exactly to the position we want it to. We're not setting the speed of the object. We're setting the uh, distance that it has to travel. So in the case of the sphere, if I say I want it to move 0 0.05 units, that means it is going to do that 1 60th of a second constantly. If I use this, it's making the speed of my object 1 for my the duration of my objects travel now there is a minor difference as well I'm gonna tell you when I stop pressing a and watch the sphere I'm gonna stop pressing a now notice that the sphere carried on for just a little bit I'm gonna stop pressing a now so my velocity gets set to zero but there's still force being applied to my sphere so it um, turns slightly I also want to show you because we have gravity applied to our object, so I'm going to get rid of the, uh, let's see. I'm going to comment all this stuff out just for one quick moment so I can demonstrate one more little piece. Oop. The last thing I want to show you guys is that gravity works on an angle. If I take my plane and I rotate my plane this way, real simple, my sphere is going to roll off the plane. It should be relatively self-explanatory, but I just want to make it clear that the collision and gravity interplay quite well. Okay, so in this video, we took a look at a different way to move shapes using velocity rather than translation. We also looked at how to apply gravity and make our objects collide with one another. Thanks for watching.